So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome to another video in which we'll be adding Google sign in on our Android application of the Ionic build. Now I specifically mentioned just Android because Android offers Google sign in natively and iOS offers Apple sign in natively that is sign in with Apple. So both of them offer the native experience which is very very important um, especially in terms of user experience. Right, so what we'll be doing is over a bunch of videos, we'll be implementing Google sign-in natively on Android and Apple sign-in natively on iOS, right? So Apple users can use Apple sign-in and Android users can use Google sign-in, providing the best experience for all the users. So we'll be using this plugin throughout the way, but we'll be just deviating from the instructions a little bit more or less, but it's going to be same. So what I want you to do first of all is just go to console.cloud.google.com firstly, right? And if you have a project, then it's good. If not, you just create a new project right here, just like I'm about to do. So click on new project and name it something like, let's just say fast thumbs project, whatever, right? And yeah, that, that's basically it. So I'm just gonna create it. So what it's going to do is it's going to give us access to certain API keys, which is required in terms of, um, you know, for accessing your application natively, the native sign in with Google on Android. All right. So once you have done this much, just go to the API and services and credentials here, because we want to create a credential for us, for us to, you know, just let Google know that we are an authentic application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new credential and I'm going to say oath client ID right here. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and select Android as my application. And you know, you can just add anything like, uh, my sign in, sign in with Google, whatever package name. It is important. You have to keep the same name as you would use in your application throughout. I'm going to make use of com <coughs> dot fast thumbs, right? <coughs> and we need the SHA one <coughs> certificate fingerprint. Now what this is, how we can get it. It's basically very simple. Google has listed this using key tool. So we have to use a key tool and we have to make use of a debug or production key store. Now there's a little bit of twist in here, which is that you would have different debug and production key stores. And eventually when you launch your app on the play store, that application would be re-signed by Google. So you would have to add another SHA one certificate fingerprint. So in essence, you should typically have three SHA one certificates on your hand. But if you don't know how to get that, let's just get into it right now. All right. So what we want to do next is we want to generate a key store first, right? Because that would allow us to sign our application in order for Google to verify that yes, this is a legit application and not some fake spam application. So what you want to do is you want to go to the description and copy this command, which is a key tool, which comes from the Java SDK installation by default. So you do not really need to worry about that a lot. You can take a look where your Java is installed by writing like where is Java or maybe where your JDK is installed. So you should be able to figure that out. So once you do that, in fact, this should be in your environment variable itself. So if you write key tool, it should just work out of the box, right? So go ahead and paste the following command. So what this does is that it generates a key store for you um, called main.keystore with an alias called fast thumbs. You may want to customize these things accordingly with an algorithm of RSA and key size of 2048 and validity of this much time, right? So you just want to leave the section alone because this is configured fine. But what I want to do is I just want to go to the Android folder and generate my key store right here inside the Android folder so that we are, you know, just, just specific that this key store is only for the Android build. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now it's going to ask me for a password. Now I want you to remember the password you write here. So I'm just going to write one, two, three, four, five, six. And you know, you can just go ahead and skip this if you want, and you can fill it if you want. Um, it's not strictly speaking required, but oh, I guess it's, it's just keeping me in the loop. So anyway, I'm just gonna kind of like, 
Oops. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to keep the same password for uh, as the same key password as well as the key store. So there we are. Now I can see that right here, we should be able to see our main dot key store file right here. So what we want to do next is we want to configure our Android build dot cradle file. Now this file is make sure this file is um, this one app Android app SRC build dot cradle right not, not src sorry android app and build.cradle you do not want to edit the file build.cradle which is just under android right and you can just take a note from that is that this file would contain this android section so what we want to do is we want to add the functionality that use our main.key store to sign our application whenever you are launching on the android so here's our configuration, the signing configuration. You can see we have a release section and we have a debug section, right? So I'm going to write the password first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six, alias is fast thumbs, right? Similarly, this is fast thumbs. And remember that I'm keeping the debug and the release configuration with the same key store, right? And th because this is a directory back, we need to add a dot dot slash. So because I am running an app slash build.cradle, I need this main.key store. So I'm going to go back a directory. If not, you can just keep it like this. And, you know, just move. Just go to Android and move our main.key store into the app folder. So that's fine as well. So now we have our main.key store inside the app folder. So we can just directly reference it like this. Right. And there we are. So yeah, one thing is you probably want the main.key store for the release to be different from the debug one. I'm keeping them same for the sake of the video, but what you could do is you can generate a different key store and use it only for production, not share it with anyone. If you're using um, you know, a development setup and you have a lot of developers on working on a single application, you can use the debug.key store, share it with other developers, and you know they would be able to just test the application just fine. So, you know, you get the idea. If you have the production.key store with you, only you would be able to publish updates on the main app store. That is the purpose, right? So once you publish um, with a certain debug, uh, with a certain key store, you would not be able to publish it with any other key store. So that's why it is important. So once we have that thing in place, we should be good to go on our, um, on our key store setup. So let's just go ahead now and generate some SHA-1 um, hashes so that we can add them into our Google's you know, console. So let me just go ahead and copy this at the moment because we're going to make use of this very soon and paste it right here. All right, so once that is all done, let's just go ahead and start working with our capacitor Google Auth plugin. So let's just go ahead and install this guy here really quick. This would actually allow us to provide native bindings to the capacitor plugin for um, Google, right? So once that is done, we can add npx cap sync or npx cap update, which is going to, you know, just properly synchronize everything. And what we can do is we can just add a client ID meta to the head tag. That's how it is. That's how it says at least. So here's our client ID, right? I hope you remember. And here's our index.html file. So let's just add the client ID right here. So I'm just going to close that and I'm going to replace this Oops, with the client ID correctly. Oops, I think I missed it. This should be the content thing. All right. So once we have that in place, you're going to see that we can just import the plugin now. So I'm going to go to app.dsx. Let me just close this. And I'm going to import this plugin right here. Or let's just see if this is the root file. This is the root file, right? So I'm just going to import this so that it registers as a plugin. And then finally, we can go ahead and use it. And let me just go ahead and basically import it at the top. And I'm going to go ahead inside my home component, import it like this. And instead of this, let's just go ahead and hack around a quick little button. So I'm going to say sign in and uh, let's see. All right. So we have 
a weird situation. Our TypeScript files aren't really helping us here. Anyway, let's just go ahead and dump this real quick so that we can just see what's going on. So I'm gonna say login with Google, something like that, right? And let's just hope this works fine. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna say npx cap open Android, which should just fire our Android for us. Let's just go ahead and rebuild the app. You should just build the app if uh, your Android simulator isn't running yet. But because mine is, I just have to rebuild the app. And there we go. It should be just up and running pretty soon after it has just done compiling all that goodies for you. And there we have it. So we have a login with Google button. So if I go ahead and click it, and it looks like we did not follow a step correctly. So let's just go ahead and uh, do a little bit of things first of all. So let's just go ahead and uh, go to strings.xml and paste it here. Package name, you want to change this as well whenever you get time. So com dot, or I'll just leave it for now, but you probably want to change it before you publish. So server client ID is what we have inside our meta tag. Copy, paste, and uh, for the main activity part, what you want is you want to go to main activity dot Java and inside on create, you want to add this Google plugin right here and get rid of this, right? So here we are. And finally, provide the configuration in the capacitor config JSON file, right? So let me just go ahead and exit this. And I'm gonna paste this. It's going to be a plugins section, which is right here. So we already have a plugin section with us. And with Google Auth, I'm gonna have a profile and email, that's just fine. And for the, um, where we are, for the server ID client, there we go, right? So once we have that in place, let's just go back and rerun our application one more time. So, so we have a little bit of syntax here inside strings.xml because we don't want this resources like that. All right, let's just go one more time and build it. Oops. And the errors keep on coming. So we have to import the Google Auth class as well. And this line here right here gets us that. So we're gonna import this. We're gonna run this one more time. All right, so there has been a hiccup with my setup. So I had to like reinstall the Android uh, um, image for this phone. So anyway, um, one thing which you might face in the setup is that if you get any sort of error like uh, coder trick studio is not defined or anything like that go to file and click on this invalidate caches and restart right and you also want to sync your project with cradle files so these two things should fix it up now once you have done that you're going to be seen see you're going to see something like this click on login with google and you should see that you get the native interface now obviously i do not have any account on this device but you can see that it's, it's actually the native thing right it's it's not a browser or anything like that so once you do add an account you should be able to you know see that choose an account dialog box and you should be able to select and go so yeah that's basically it for this video if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one really soon